Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, Pray for us, San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us, San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we proclaim Jesus as our King. Let us praise Him. Let us worship Him. Let us submit ourselves to Him so that we may belong to His kingdom of justice, love, and peace. In a special way, we celebrate this Mass in thanksgiving to the Lord for the seven years of my ministry here at the Manila Cathedral. And we also thank the Lord for the gift of a new community of priests with Monsignor Rolly de la Cruz, Father Bong Bayaras, and Father Cali Liamado as they continue the mission of shepherding in our Mother Church. As we gather in the name of Jesus, our King, let us now ask God's pardon for all our sins and let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. You were sent to heal the contrite of our Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, to intercede for us, Kyrie.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them, with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the, vi the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> the rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God, even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated.
My dear brothers and sisters, today, the whole church, the whole universal church, declares and professes that Jesus is our King, that Jesus is our only King. And Jesus is King because He came from a line of kings. From the human perspective, Jesus' ancestry are full of kings. Nagmula siya sa lahi ng mga hari. In our first reading today, we heard how David was chosen to be the king of Israel. And it is from this line of David that Jesus was born. Si Jesus ay galing sa lahi ni David. But Jesus is king not only because he came from the line of kings. There is something more than that. From the divine perspective, Jesus is king because he is the son of God. St. Paul in our second reading today talks of Jesus as the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. All thrones, all authority, all powers, all principalities, all dominions are under Him because He is the Son of God. And so Jesus is King not only in His humanity that He came from the line of kings, He is truly the King, the King of kings because He is the Son of God. And even the thief crucified with Jesus recognized that Jesus is King. In our gospel today, that good thief at facing death said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. By saying this, he acknowledges that Jesus is King. Alalahanin mo naman ako kapag naghahari ka na. Ibig sabihin, kinikilala niya si Jesus na nakapakong katabi niya bilang hari. But take note of the response of Jesus to him. Jesus did not say, Okay, I will remember you when I am already reigning in my kingdom. I will bring you to my palace or I will bring you to my mansion. What was the response of Jesus? I say to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, the King, does not have a palace. Ang mga hari sa mundong ito, merong kanya-kanyang palasyo. But Jesus does not live in a palace. Jesus does not live in a mansion. Jesus dwells in paradise. And when we talk of paradise, oftentimes we remember the paradise given by God to Adam and Eve. Yun ang paraiso. Kapag pinag-uusapan natin ang paraiso, naiisip natin yung nilikha ng Diyos para kay Adan at kay Eva. A place where there is no suffering, no pain, no labor, 
no sickness, and no death. Paradise. Paradise is a place where everything is provided for. Sabi ng Diyos kay Adan at kay Eva, kainin nyo ang lahat ng gusto ninyo maliban sa bunga ng punong ito. Hindi ka na kailangan magtrabaho, magluto para kumain. Lahat nandyan na, kakainin mo na lang. Paraiso. Paradise is a place of innocence, of purity, of goodness. Adam and Eve were naked, but there was no malice. That is paradise. But the paradise of Genesis does not compare to the paradise promised by Jesus. Because the paradise of Jesus is being with Jesus himself. That is paradise. Like what he said to the thief, Today, you will be with me in paradise. And so, to be with Jesus is to be in paradise. Everywhere and at all times that we feel the presence of Jesus, that we experience the love of God, that is paradise. Hindi na natin kailangang hintayin na mamatay para maranasan natin ang paraiso. Dito pa lamang sa mundo, sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay, kapag nararamdaman natin na si Jesus ay nagahari sa atin, nasa paraiso na tayo. Today, even here on earth, we could be with Jesus in paradise. Even in the midst of suffering and pain, even in sickness, when we feel Jesus suffering with us, that is paradise. Even in sadness, in depression, in loneliness, in weeping, in the loss of our loved ones, when Jesus weeps with us, that is paradise. Even in the midst of all the problems that we face each day, even in the midst of war, injustice, if we feel the presence of Jesus, we are in paradise. When we strive to be good and to do good always, when we strive to be holy and to follow the will of God in our lives, that is paradise. When we fight for what is right, for what is just, for what is true, in the midst of the unjust structures in society, in the midst of dishonesty and lies, when we fight for Jesus, the King of Truth, we are in paradise. Kahit na may problema sa ating pamilya, kahit na paminsan-minsan may hindi pagkakasundo, kahit na minsan kinaiinisan natin ng bawat isa, magkakapatid, mag-asawa, magkamag-anak, magkakaibigan, kapag nariyan pa rin si Jesus at si Jesus ang nagahari, yan ay paraiso. Kahit sa mundong ito, na maraming kaguluhan, na maraming problema, kapag hinayaan natin na si Jesus ang maghari, dito pa lamang nararanasan na natin ang paraisong ipinangako ni Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, to be with Jesus is to be in paradise. Whether that be here on earth 
or in heaven. The solemnity of Christ the King also marks the last Sunday in the liturgical year, in the liturgical calendar. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent. Ibig sabihin, limang linggo na lang magpapasko na. And as we conclude the liturgical year, the liturgical calendar, I also conclude my mission in the Manila Cathedral as its rector. Teacher po kasi ako sa liturgy. Kaya dapat nakaayon sa liturgy ang pamamaalam kong ito. The last Sunday of the liturgical year. For the past seven years of my ministry here at the Manila Cathedral, I have considered the Manila Cathedral not only the structure but also the community as paradise. Hindi po dahil madali ang buhay dito, napakahirap po. Hindi po dahil mababait ang lahat ng tao, may mga pasaway din. Hindi po dahil well-behaved ang mga staff ng Manila Cathedral, kayo na lang po ang bahalang hum- sila na lang po ang bahalang humusga kung well-behaved talaga sila. But even, even though the Manila Cathedral was not a perfect kingdom, it is paradise. Because in the midst of the challenges of ministry, of ministry and ministering to people, to God's people, I have felt the presence of Jesus. I have felt the love and concern of Jesus, not only for me, but for you, our dear brothers and sisters. And so this is paradise. And as I leave the paradise that is the Manila Cathedral, I will go to another paradise in the midst of the busy district of Makati. Sa gitna ng kaguluhan, ng business, ng traffic, ng shopping sa Makati, may paraiso dahil nandun din si Jesus. God is there waiting for me. I will not bring Jesus there. Jesus is already there. And He is calling me, Come, I will bring you to paradise. And so I'm excited to leave this paradise in Intramuros, to go to the paradise in Makati, where Jesus and Mama Mary are waiting for me. In this Mass, we also thank God for the gift of the new priests, to serve the Manila Cathedral. Monsignor Rolly de la Cruz, our new rector. Mons, kung nasan ka man, alam ko na nonood ka ngayon. Wala pa naman po siya sa paraiso. Nandun lang siya sa paraiso sa New Zealand where he is having his sabbatical. And Father Bong Bayaras, who will administer the Manila Cathedral, until Monsignor Rolly returns from his well-deserved sabbatical. And Father Khalil Yamado will continue to be with us to serve our Mother Church. To Monsignor Rolly, Father Bong, and Father Kali, I hope that you will see the Manila Cathedral as paradise, not only because of our beautiful church, but also because of our beautiful community. And we are beautiful because Jesus is here. Jesus is present in our midst. He is here in this building, our mother church, the Manila Cathedral. But He is present all the more in our community, whether they be here in the Manila Cathedral 
or those joining us online. Jesus is also inviting you to be with Him in paradise. Sana po sa inyong paglilingkod dito sa Manila Cathedral, makita nyo rin, katulad ng nakita ko, ang paraiso. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is our King. And as He promised the good thief, so He also promises us today, I say to you, you will be with me in paradise. Let us not wait for the afterlife to experience that paradise. Let us allow Jesus to be King of our lives, of our families, of our society, of our country, and of the world, so that even here and now, we will be with Jesus in paradise. Please all stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our King reigns from His cross. He reigns in His eternal kingdom where He intercedes for us. Through our loving Redeemer, let us make our prayers of intercession. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, the body of Christ, that its royal head may draw all believers into the visible unity of the one body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority in our world today, that they may learn from the King who came to suffer and to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all prisoners of conscience, that they may remain firm amid sufferings, inspired by Christ, who was unjustly condemned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For hope in the future, that we may look forward to the final triumph of the reign of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have passed through death, that Christ who forgave the good thief may welcome them into paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and all the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, grant our petitions, for you have called us out of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praising glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son Himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus, our King, taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Antonio. Behold Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. On behalf of the whole Manila Cathedral family, the servants and volunteers of the Manila Cathedral, the staff and the personnel, and the whole Manila Cathedral community and even those online, we would like to uh, express our thanks and gratitude to Father Reginald Malikdem, our rector for seven years. As a token of our gratitude for Father Reggie and through also the generosity of the Lectors and Commentators Ministry of the Manila Cathedral and the kindness of the Talleres de Nazaret in Quezon City, we would like to give you, Father Reggie, a chasuble uh, in the colors of Mary, Mother of Hope in Landmark blue and gold so that you can use it on your first mass in landmark baka gusto niyong tanungin bakit chasuble ang ibinigay namin kay Father Reggie hindi ko dahil pinapaalis na namin siya dito kundi dahil alam kong mamimiss niya kami at mamimiss niya ang Manila Cathedral. Father Reggie, whenever you wear this chasuble, know that thousands are praying for you. And whenever you celebrate the Mass, please pray also for us. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagpunta ngayong umagang ito para sa ating misa. Alam ko po marami nagpunta sa inyo dahil nga sa Thanksgiving mas na ito. Kung nakapunta po kayo sa Intramuros, makakapunta rin po kayo sa Makati. Magkita-kita po tayo sa Makati. And I, I wish to thank in a special way my parents, my uh, brother, my sister-in-law, and my uh, Two nephews no, na palagi nakasuporta. I also want to thank uh, uh, Tatay Maning, Nanay Mila, Kuya Nonoy, nandiyan ba si Ate Delia, the parents, the brother of uh, Cardinal Chito Tagle for being with us this morning. He, they have been also a family to me. Maraming salamat din po sa mga religious sisters who are here um, to the, my... Uh, uh, to the many, many uh, people who supported us the past years, lalong-lalo na po sa Intramuros Administration. Nandito po yata yung mga former administrators, no? Attorney Marco, Attorney Guillier, maraming salamat po. At uh, sa inyong lahat na narito at nasa online, I wish to thank you. No? Hindi ko na po pahabain ng pasasalamat. Nag-video po ako ng aking pasasalamat. Baka kasi maiyak pa ako ngayon. So panoorin nyo na lamang po sa Facebook page ng Manila Cathedral. After this Mass, we will post my uh, Thanksgiving message to all of you. So uh, I, I really would not say goodbye kasi babalik at babalik po ako dito sa Manila Cathedral. Baka sabihin niyo goodbye ng goodbye, babalik din naman pala. <laughs> so at, at hindi ko naman po may iwasang hindi bumalik dito dahil ito ang Cathedral ng Archdiocese of Manila. So I thank God, I thank the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I thank all of you for, uh, for all your support these years. And please pray for me, for all the priests who are also transferring this week. You know, mahigit kumulang pong mga 100 plus na pari ang lilipat ngayong linggong ito. And uh, please pray for the new priests in the, in the, in the Manila Cathedral. Kami po ay palaging na... Uh, uh, magkakasama sa pananalangin para mapagbuti namin ang paglilingkod para sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po at patuloy niyo pong ipagdasal ang mga pari. God bless everyone.
please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. May He let His face shine upon you and show you His mercy now and forever. Amen. May He turn His countenance towards you and give you His peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. So I now officially end my role as rector of the Manila Cathedral. I now pass the responsibility to Monsignor Rolly and to Father Bong. Welcome po sa inyo sa Manila Cathedral. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.